Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about bodies. So what is a body? Uh, a body in engineering mechanics is any object or collection of connected objects that we want to analyze as a whole. Uh, so this can be something as simple as a hammer and a one object that is our object of analysis. It can be something as large as something like a bridge. Uh, it could also be something like a pair of scissors. So we could treat the pair of scissors as a body as a whole. Uh, we could also break this down into multiple pieces, each of which itself is a body. So I could treat the scissors as kind of body one is this piece, body two is this piece, body three would be the rivet holding the two pieces together. All right, so more important, uh, a body is a very general term, and more important than defining something as a body, uh, we need to make some assumptions about the type of body that we are analyzing. Uh, so the two most important distinctions uh, for engineering mechanics are going to be, is am I going to treat this as a rigid body or as a deformable body? Uh, and I'm going to treat this as a particle or an extended body. All right, so let's go into what each of those distinctions are. So rigid versus deformable, and then we'll talk about particle versus extended. Uh, so a rigid body is a body which does not bend, stretch, twist, or otherwise deform in any way under loading. So it's completely rigid. A deformable body, on the other hand, will bend, stretch, twist, or otherwise deform under loading. Uh, so in actuality, every body is going to be deformable. Um, everything is going to deform a little bit under loading. Uh, but sometimes uh, the deformations are going to be small enough that we simply ignore them for analysis. It's not going to be a significant impact on our problem. Uh, so something like, you know, if you've got a really thick bar of steel, uh, it will still stretch a little bit if you uh, kind of put it in tension. Uh, but sometimes it's so small that it's, it's not really that important. All right, so let's go into some examples of where we would talk about rigid bodies versus deformable bodies. So something like our hammer. Uh, our hammer, uh, for the purposes of analysis, if we've got like a dynamics problem, we're swinging a hammer, it's going to deform so little that we really don't need to worry about um, the deformation of the hammer. We just need to move, worry about the movement of the hammer. Something like our bridge. Uh, so as a car goes over it, uh, the different beams are going to stretch or compress or bend. Um, but hopefully all of those things are minimal enough uh, that we can kind of ignore those deformations for our analysis. Uh, something even like a car. So I might have some visible deformations, but depending on how precise I want my model to be, I might even assume that my car uh, is a rigid body that's kind of moving around the track. I might ignore something like the suspension, which is going to have some deformation in it. So things that we want to not assume are rigid, which things we are going to assume are deformable. So something like a car in a car crash. Uh, definitely there is a lot of deformation going on in this uh, picture here. Uh, so if I'm modeling a car crash, if I'm doing like some safety uh, evaluation, I definitely cannot model my car as a rigid body my car is going to be deforming. Uh, I also have things that intentionally deform, something like a spring uh, in a system is going to be a deformable body. Uh, it's kind of usually the whole point of having the spring there in the first place. Uh, and then finally, um, let's talk about, go back to our example of the scissors. Uh, so each piece of this pair of scissors, so uh, you know, piece one, piece two, and the rivet holding those two pieces together, I might treat those as rigid uh, but the scissors as a whole are definitely not rigid. So they're not really deformable and they're not really stretching. Uh, it's simply put together in a way that uh, is not rigid. So this is going to be an important distinction. Do I want to treat it like a rigid body, which is generally a simpler analysis? Or do I want to treat this as a deformable body, uh, which is going to be a little more complex analysis? All right, so next up, we want to talk about particles versus extended bodies. So a particle is a body where we assume all of the mass is concentrated at a single point. Uh, so it is a single point in space. Uh, an extended body is any body where we have mass spread out over an area or a volume. Uh, so in actuality, every body is an extended body. Uh, there is nothing that is uh, so small that it's just a single point. Uh, but again, sometimes we can treat something like a particle to simplify problems. All right, so let's go into examples for this. So what might I treat as a particle? Why not, what might I treat as an extended body? Uh, so particle, something like a baseball. So if I'm throwing a baseball, 
I'm modeling it traveling through space. I might treat that, treat the baseball as just a single point in space uh, and kind of follow through with projectile motion. So even something like as big as a comet. So this is a much larger object. Uh, but if I'm kind of modeling the comet traveling through the solar system, I might treat it just like a single point. Uh, I might not worry too much about, you know, the overall volume of this. Um, and it might be insignificant compared to the trajectory of the comet. Uh, another instance, and we're going to talk more detail about this later, is a concurrent force system. So here is a sky cam. Uh, it's a camera that they hold over stadiums. Uh, it's held up by three cables. So all of the forces in this case are going to come together at a single point. It's going to be kind of a single point right about here because the tension in the cables and the gravity force are all coming together at the single point. Uh, if I model it as a particle at that point where all the forces come together, uh, that's going to be kind of perfectly acceptable for much of our analysis. We can treat this as just a particle. All right, so what can I not treat as a particle? What can I treat, or what do I need to treat as an extended body? Uh, anything where the forces don't line up, um, so everything kind of comes together at this middle point here. For something like this crowbar, there's forces down here, there's forces up here. Um, this is definitely something we cannot model as a particle. We're going to treat this as an extended body. The crowbar itself uh, is going to be quite different. Uh, also something like our car. So we have normal forces, the gravity would be somewhere in the middle, normal forces at each of the four wheels. Um, we are also going to have friction forces depending if we're braking, if we're stopping. Uh, but there's definitely no point where all of these forces come together. Our car is going to be an extended body as well. All right, so some notation shorthand just to fit this in here. Um, in statics and dynamics, we're almost always going to assume we're working with rigid bodies. Uh, so if we're working with deformable bodies, that is more the domain of our strength of materials uh, course, is the study of deformable bodies. Um, so we're going to work with particles, and we're going to work with rigid extended bodies. So if everything is at one point, it can't really stretch or twist or anything, so it's rigid there. Uh, rigid extended bodies, we are going to simply call a rigid body. So when I say rigid body analysis, I'm really talking about rigid extended body analysis. Uh, I'm making those two assumptions in one, and that's how it's written through most of the textbook here. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.